The best mythical epic. How's it going everyone? One Dr. Genius here and welcome to another Prodigy video. In this video, we're going to be figuring out what the best mythical epic in Prodigy is. We had 9 of them. So let's quickly take all of these epics out for a battle against something they'd be strong against, right? It's not too hard, we just have to go to an area, for example, an area would be Firefly Forest. And then we just have to like attack all of our opponents with the fire pipes and see which one of these dudes deal more damage, which one of our teammates deal more damage. And floor over here can be the competition over here. Okay, it seems like over here we have our first opponent, the Musketeer, who will be obliterated quite rapidly. So let's attack this dude. We're looking strictly at damage over here. Meg Mayhem deals 5.2k damage, which is more than half of our opponent's health. And it's just enough damage to stop our wizard from having to cast 3 attacks to eliminate our opponents, because our wizard might only be able to deal 4.6k damage in 2 attacks, which means that the musketeer would survive from anywhere from 100 to 200 health, which would cost us an additional attack. But it seems like luckily, due to Meg, May Meg Mayhem's hot snow attack, we don't have to do that. Now, the only thing we have to text which we have to test next is totality casted by Luma. So let's do that quickly. Also, you guys can see it's pretty cute. They have one of the ears or horns of the pets like twisted in like stickers, but it's kind of unfolding. So let's do that quickly. Totality. All right, so now that we're in a battle against another Aquaster with approximately the same health, I, about the same health, what we can do is now we can test out our second epic attack known as Totality, which is casted by Luma. Now hopefully this attack animation isn't similar to Meg Mischiefs or I'm gonna be pretty mad. Because first of all, these guys cost like $20 in game, which is kinda insane. But anyways, over here you guys can see Luma comes up forward and casts the exact- Oh! Okay, it seems like Luma sometimes with a critical hit can cast as much damage as Meg Mayhem. But over here, unfortunately, that was a critical hit, so we might have to test that once again. Let me do another again test. Oh, we, we can see that tested once again. Okay, so there's another opponent which we can actually go up against, and it seems like that the opponent has decided to come towards us for a battle. Now, let's once again test um, totality. And hopefully this time it won't be a critical attack so we can see how much damage Luma would deal like for normal. Like an average amount of time how much damage would Luma deal. Because I know if we're talking about critical hits, Meg Mag Mayhem can deal like 9k damage in a single attack. Alright, so without a critical hit it's approximately 5000 damage when a critical hit increases damage by 600. Either way, you guys can see that Luma has done a quite quite a good job. The wizard will still be able to two-shot this forest caller, meaning we won't have to do much work. What would have taken us three attacks now only takes two. So what I'd say is that Luma is right behind Meg Mayhem. Now let's see our next fire contender. Alright, so let's attack this Muscatio once again and cast our next fire type spell because I believe we have Meg Mayhem and Luma remaining. No, Meg Mayhem and... What is this? It seems like their spells are even named the same thing. Alright, so let's cast Meg Mayhem's attack over here and see how much damage he manages to deal to our opponents. Meg Mayhem casts his attack and deals 5,197 damage, which means he's a little bit stronger than Luma as expected. He's on par with Meg Mayhem, who is at 1,200 damage, but a little bit weaker. So you guys can see it basically depends on Prodigy luck, on how the Prodigy gods bless your attacks. But if you choose like Luma, Meg Mayhem, Meg Mischief against Earth type pets, you will be guaranteed that half their health will be obliterated usually right now if you're going up against pets with like 12,000 health or well in that case you'll have to cast um three person attacks anyways um Meg mayhem's attack sometimes might deal 1500 damage right so you guys can see casting their super attacks as i like to call them instead of their mythical or epic attacks will get you to deal a lot more damage now there's one other po 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 now there's one other opponent over here which we can already two shot, so let's see if our Luminites over here will be able to keep up our expectations. Will they be able to take down any pet with 9000 health upwards 
almost near 10,000, right? The second a pit approaches 10,000, it's like even if you deal 5k damage, it's gonna leave approximately 5k left. And your wizard is not really powerful enough to deal another 5k damage. And over here, teams like Luminites and Luma both cast the same amount of damage ap around approximately 4,900. Meaning they both are even, but they both are behind Meg Mayhem and Meg Mischief. Which is interesting, I'd say. Alright, and with that, you guys can see we've basically shown you the entire view of all of the fire type epics which we have along right now. Of course, we don't have Blue Fire Meg Mayhem here, but what you guys can see is everyone except for that who can cast fire type spells have been tested. Now, I guess it's time we finish the testing of the other few pets because we still have ourselves our entire electric category remaining. Let's start testing those guys. Ooh, electric. Attack! Okay, over here it seems like we have two electric type pets which we can attack. We've already tested out Big Hex, so I guess it's time we test out. Anyways, let's cast Star Blast attack over here and see how much damage it deals. I'm not expecting much, to be honest. I'm not expecting much damage for either parties, to be honest. Because you guys can see their health is high, but their damage they deal is through the floor. Okay, that's just a bit too disappointing. 2k damage, this is actually gonna require my wizard to cast 3 different spells to compensate for it. Because like, dude, no, not even 3, it's gonna require 4 spells to like finish off this opponent. Star Blast managed to do the impossible, he managed to make it that I'll have to cast 4 spells to defeat an opponent with 8900 health. And that's more than what's, no, not even 4, we'd have to cast 8 to finish off both opponents. Wow, he is really bad, do not use them, okay? Let's test the other pets. Wait, I just casted an electric spell on an electric opponent. What in the world am I doing? Anyways, over here you guys can see. Alright, and as it's time to test the electric category, it seems like two electro opponents have come up in front of us. Let's try attacking them with our electro pets and see how much damage our electro beings can do. Because electro versus electro only deals 2k, so I would not recommend under any circumstance. But let's test it out over here. Alright, it seems like Big Hex casts his spell and does 3k damage. Okay, that's not too bad, we'll still be able to two-shot all of our opponents, although it's way less than what our other mythical epics can deal. Well, I'm sure that Meg Mayhem, Luma, and all of those others won't be able to deal their 4,000, 5,000 damage over here. They'd still be able to deal, like, let's let's switch over to Meg Mayhem and see, get a hint of what the other epics could be able to deal in terms of damage. Would he be able to deal as much damage as Big Hex's normal attack, right? The spell Volcano seems to do 3,440 damage. That is basically 300 damage less than Meg Mayhem, meaning these pets would... While they would be weaker against these opponents, you guys can see there's something else which they can do. They can cast different types of spells, right? Right? Like, they have an electric spell which they can cast. Meaning, if you're desperately in need of it, you can cast an electro spell and still deal a decent amount of damage. Now, because I want to catch the pet in the back, I'm not gonna do that. Alright, right, you guys can see if you cast an Electro Spell, it seems to do 5,000 damage against them. Meaning Meg Mayhem still keeps up with his 5k attack, even if you're against pets which have like the... If you have an attack which the other pets are weak against, you can just snap them out of existence. While well, I guess Big Hex, who has 4 different attacks, won't be able to do that. So that gives us that these pets can deal like 5k damage consistently against pets which they have... In which they have enough energy and the and enough um what do you call it? and the right elemental spells to deal damage against another opponent well now let's test out the other type let's test out the other remaining pets which survived uh over here you guys can see it seems like we're going up against a river neek or caller a river caller right so now what we can do is we can cast our last attack spell which is needed which is the umbra blast casted by our Wonderful pets known as as Nebula. You guys can see the blast does a grand total of 3,742 damage. While Meg, well, if we put Meg Mayhem up, friends, I'm sure he could just one shot our opponents, couldn't he? Let's try. Oh. 
Alright, so now that we've done all of that, you guys can see we've casted all of these spells from our pets, and it does seem like Mag Mayhem was able to one-shot that guy. So now the only thing which we have left to do is test out our water pets on our fire type opponents. So let's go down over here and quickly cast some fire spells, right? Let's just burn our opponent. The Mal Prism has been casted, and it seems to deal 4,000 damage. Okay, it's not enough to take out the Flame Neek, but it is a decent amount of damage in my opinion, right? You guys can see it deals a decent amount of damage, right? Like, our wizard will still have to cast 3 spells, but it's not as bad as the other, other pets. As you can see, we're in another battle, and now we will test out the last mythical epic remaining to be cast uh, to have casted a spell, and that is Titus, right? Estimated damage potential of all of the pets, right? You guys can see this guy does 4,420 damage, which by the looks of him makes it look like he's stronger than Shiver and Scorch, and he might actually be. So this guy actually makes it that a pet which would take three attacks only takes two attacks, which means he is stronger. But you guys can see the dynamic between the mythical epics and prodigy is quite interesting. You have Meg Mayhem and Meg Mischief at the top, and then on the top consistently you have yourselves all of the fire type myth mythical epics. None of them are weak, and the rest of the epics, if they have spells against the opponents which are effective, they will be able to deal damage, right? Like, Meg Mayhem is able to deal consistent 1k, 1k, 1k against opponents who are, well, and a consistent 5k against opponents who have weaknesses against the spells which they can cast and it seems to be a pattern which follows around with the rest of the epics that's what it seems like so if you look at it from that case it still seems like Meg Mayhem and Meg Mischief are the strongest pets in some of the area right sure they might only deal 3 3k damage in the electric areas but that's more than what some of these pets over here can deal like. Imagine try casting a lightning spell and then have Meg Mayhem just deal like just 300 less damage than you do. Like compared to its normal that's 2000 damage less but compared to other pets it's quite a lot less right it's quite a lot less it's no it's not quite a lot less basically it's not as small as an amount compared to them because to the other pets, it's only like a 200 damage bonus different. You might as well just use them as a buzz budget, budget, uh, a star blast nebula or big hex. Ah, won't you look at that? Okay, it seems like we've come into battle and it's done a showcase of all of the fire epics attacks. Now over here, it seems like we're going up against a Squawks. Now a Squawks is only weak against ice, and fortunately, we only have one ice type pest, one ice type pet, which we can test on it. I was about to call him a pest, but anyways, let's use the attack Frigid Blast on our ice opponent and see how good he does. We'll have to like basically, we'll cast three attacks. Well, let's see over here. It seems to do 4,600 damage, which is just enough to make our opponents well one-shotable. Meaning Arcturion does pass, but he does not do as much damage as Meg Mayhem and some of the other epics stronger than it. Right, so let's go and check out our next category. Category seems to be Electro. We do have a fair amount of Electro users on our team. So let's go and start attacking this Apostor who happens to be a water type pet on our opponent's team. Monster battle, as you guys can see over here, I have quite a few, well, storm pets. Well, I have one over here, and then I have two over here, right? So far, we've only been able to test um, all of the fire type pets, all of the ice type pets. So I guess we'll get started with the storm type pet testing of Big Hex. I do not expect much damage over here. This guy is just a tank, right? He's just meant to take damage, not deal. You know, I'd be happy with maybe 3k damage or something like that, you know? 3.7k, that's weaker than some of my pets, right? You can tell that my wizard would deal more damage than this. His health should have been, have been, should have been at 3k. So you guys can see Big Hex is really on the lower side of damage dealing capabilities. Like, really, really, really bad. Let's try testing something else out. So you guys can see that sums up this video on what the best mythical epics in Prodigy, best epics in Prodigy are, and by conclusion they're the fire type epics because not only do they deal insane damage, but they're also effective in a lot of regions. Some of these fire type pets might have water spells or something along that line. 
Of course, the um, whether or not your wizard kills your opponent also depends on your damage, which can sometimes variate. But yeah, guys, I think that's gonna be all for this video. I hope you appreciated it and found out what some of the strongest epics in Prodigy are. And if you did, please do make sure to destroy that subscribe button, turn that notification bell, and give this video a humongous thumbs up. I'll be catching you all next time. One Dr. Genius out of the house. Bye and have a good time. Thank you.